about this class, <coughs> other than what's on the exam exactly. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so it's going to be like the previous one, pretty much, uh, for the design critique. There's going to be a design critique, and there's going to be a redesign. So I'll give you uh, a visualization, and runner-ups, and places three, two, and one. Sometimes I didn't do like distinctions between two and three, but in this case the ranking was pretty clear, so we have really a best, a second best, and a third best project. But the, everything else is not ranked, so the, the, the order here is arbitrary. And then how we come up with the top three uh, is each TA casts three votes towards his favorite three projects. Um, so like you, get, you can pick three, and then the one with the most votes gets uh, the price, and so on. We have first, a second, and a third place. Chocolate for everyone, uh, plus 12 points for everybody. Um, and then we have eight runner-ups who get 11 points. And of course, for all, most importantly, you're listed on the Hall of Fame <laughs> on the website. <laughs> okay, the runner-ups. And so that's like how it works is I'll just like uh, read out the people. I'll probably misspell, uh, mispronounce a lot of the names. Then I'll show you the YouTube video. Okay, the first runner-up is Analysis and visualization of Hillary Clinton email data. <laughs> Let's take a look. Our project aims to visualize the most important topics that Secretary Hillary Clinton communicated in her emails. Being the last data set of over four years of emails, we thought this would be a helpful tool for anyone who wanted to explore these emails based on their relevant subjects. The statistical language R is used for pre-processing, data cleaning, and finally topic modeling using the LDA algorithm. The main visualization element is the post-directed graph at the top, which contains the most frequently occurring words for each topic. When a particular topic is chosen from this graph, the stream graph gives the temporal relationship with the most frequently occurring words within the topic selected. Each of the individual streams represents a word in the topic, and the size of the stream depicts the frequency of that word used per month. The same information also shows up in a tooltip when a user hovers over the graph. In the third visualization, which is a word cloud, users can also see the most frequently made people in that topic. At the bottom, we have an email text box which updates to show the list of emails concerning the topic. The user can also view the full content of email by clicking on them. Coming to the individual contributions, Murli Krishna Teja from Data Track implemented the data pre-processing, topic modeling, and the stream graph. I, Vinita Yaski from the General CS Track, designed the project along with the force directed graph and email visualization. Rohan Kohli from Graphics and Visualization Track implemented the word cloud along with the interaction between the four visualizations. Besides these major responsibilities, we collaborated to solve more complex bugs. Thank you. Okay, yeah, that was a great project. We liked it especially because of the intricate data managing that was involved. So very well done. Okay, our next runner-up is Brazil, Credit Operations in Public Sector and the Human Development Index. Brazil, Credit Operations in the Public Sector and the Human Development Index. This work intends to show relationships between credit operations in the Brazilian public sector and the Human Development Index. Our interface gives you the possibility of taking an initial tour to better understand what is being visualized and what the charts mean. You can get a brief summary of each chart at the beginning or when you feel that you need it. The map gives you the possibility of selecting a federated entity that will have its data highlighted on all the other charts. The gray box in the center displays useful information about the entity. A left click on the map resets it to its initial state. Also, notice that it is possible to highlight specific topics by hovering or clicking on the legend. The play button feeds information in real time to all the charts using data from the Brazilian National Treasury from March of 2002 to December of 2015 and the United Nations. 
It is possible to interact with the charts while the real-time data is being fed. At the bottom, a line chart shows how the money from credit operations was distributed over the years. As previously stated, you can filter it using the legend. The bar chart at the bottom left displays the Human Development Index for Brazil and the selected entity. Once again, a left click, click on the map restarts it to its initial state. You can retake the tour whenever you would like. You can click on the top left of the screen to see the data under the Gompertz function. It is impressive to see how the practical data fits the theoretical data. Finally, it is possible to brush over the credit request operations to select a date under a certain range. If a range is selected, the filter data is propagated to every chart. Please check out our website to interact with our system. If you would like to know more, our process book gives you a great view of our data and our work. Okay. That was pretty impressive in terms of uh, interaction and uh, the comprehensiveness of all of you. Okay, the next runner-up is Curly Squiggy, uh, Brian Kimming and James Moore. Hello and welcome to Curly Squeegee, an actor filmography visualization tool. This is a web application that we have hosted at curlysqueegee.herokuapp.com. The interface is very straightforward and the user can enter the actor name of anyone whose filmography they would like to visualize. Let's start with Christopher Walken. We click submit and our application goes and collects his entire filmography for display in a number of ways. Our first view is an XY scatter plot which shows each movie he started. This view is particularly effective at identifying the lowest rated film he's been associated with, as well as the highest. This view is also interactive, and we can make a selection that will appear highlighted in the next view. This parallel access diagram is useful for allowing users to select a range of films that fit a certain criteria. For instance, suppose we wanted to find the highest grossing films that Christopher Walken has started. We scroll back up and we see that these are highlighted in our filmography view. Oddly enough, each of these films seem to cluster around 2005. Our third view is a tree map of co-actors. This groups certain top billed co-stars in accordance to the number of films that they have starred in with Christopher Walken. Here we see Glenn Close is the first one with four films. Our last view is a genre map. We chose this to see whether certain actors appear disproportionately in certain types of films. Each circle is its own genre and its size based on the number of films that the selected actor has acted in. Here we see Christopher Walken has appeared most in dramas, also in comedy, and again in crime. This is Curly Squeegee. We hope you enjoy it. Again, you can find us at curlysqueegee.herokuapp.com. Okay. Well, what we found really cool here is that this really works for almost every actor. Um, so you can really punch in your actor, and you can see that there, there's also a lot of processing going on. Okay, the next runner up is Exploration of National Park Recreation by Tony Niven and Halil Mariosh. to look up the list. I chose to put the video on this. 
excited. That's not good. Yeah, okay, that's not good. Have you ever learned about the national parks of the United States? Do you know which parks are the oldest? What about which parks are the most popular for camping in the backcountry? Our visualization will help you answer these questions and more. The slide at the top is used to select the view the user wants to view. This derives every view in the visualization. On the map, one of the several selection modes allows the user to view the parts according to several metrics. Next to the map, a small text box explains some information about the selected decade. The slider also drives the visitation parts next to the map where all the selected parts are displayed and compared for the given year. You can track the growth of the national parks by scrolling the slider starting from 1930 and up. You will notice how the parks nodes on the map and the bars change. Monthly comparison is also an option from 1979 and up. Parks can be selected or unselected by clicking on their map node or with the reset and select all buttons on the parks. This is nice if the user wants to focus on the parks only, for example. To use the Activities view, a user simply selects the bar from the part they wish to explore. The Activities view will show the total activities for the year. Clicking on the activity will bring up a comparison view that allows the user to decide which parts are the most popular for the activity they selected. A user can also select from the Activities comparison view to bring that park in question into focus. Okay, another great project. Very interesting for you too, of course. Then next runner-up is Interactive Needle Electrono Anatomical <laughs> Potential Tracking where Carly Gillette Dasher Press and Wilson Good. Ischemic heart disease is the leading cause of death in the world, responsible for around 8 million deaths annually. Ischemia results due to oxygen deprivation in cardiac tissue. The current clinical success for diagnosing ischemia is only around 40%. It uses the ST40 time point to measure the voltage and diagnose ischemia. The goal of Anemter, the interactive needle electromagnetic potential tracking tool, is to improve our understanding of the dynamics of ischemia and improve the diagnostic success. We will do this by analyzing the ST40 voltage and looking at the variation in the waveform captured at different points in the heart. There are three basic methods of interaction in our visualization. The first is updating the potential threshold in the ST40 plot, which shows how the ST40 potential of a selected electrode changes over a number of runs. Updating the ST40 threshold bar updates the threshold value, which specifies which electrodes will be bin in the histogram. Namely, only electrodes with potentials above the specified threshold will be included in the histogram. The histogram bins these electrodes based on their depth in the heart wall, endo, mid, and epi. These categories are also encoded through color, which corresponds to the colors in the needle electrogram plot from the far right. We can select a particular electrode grouped by needles in the bullseye view, which shows electrodes placed on a clinically relevant 2D projection of the heart ventricles. When we select an electrode, the SD40 plot is updated, and if this electrode corresponds to a new needle, the electrogram plot is updated with the 10 electrodes for that needle. We can also update the selected run by moving the run bar in the diverging scatter bin plot. This plot shows all SD40 potential values for all electrodes bin by run number. 
Changing the slipped and run updates the electrodes shown in the histogram, the color encoded SC40 potential shown in the bullseye plot, and the electrogram shown in the electrogram plot. Okay, we like this one especially because of the custom visualization. That was very nice. So, the next genre up is Pot Tracker by <laughs> Sony Harazani, uh, Yogesh, and Moan. I, a slight suggestion I would rename it to Pothole Tracker. <laughs> <laughs> Hello everyone, welcome to the Mumbai Port Tracker Database project. This project basically aims to serve a common man of Mumbai city by providing an interactive visualization of the potholes. It keeps track of the pothole data and does an area-wise analysis of the statistics of the potholes. This, this web page has four main components. It has the rainbow Tilford tree, it has the Google Maps, it has the information box and it has the tagged area chart. So let's see the working of the tree. So the tree, ha tree has various nodes. This is the main Mumbai node, and these are the areas of Mumbai, and these are the potholes. So when we click on an area, the potholes get opened up, and these potholes are sorted according to the dates, and the size of the potholes indicate the vehicle it counts. So these are these are the vehicle it counts, and the red potholes indicates indicates that there are key institutions such as hospitals or schools nearby them. So now let's click at at a particular pothole. So when we click we can see the pothole in the Google Maps and we can also read in the information about the pothole. So we can see the area name, address and vehicles. Let's click at the Mumbai mail node. So when we clicked on the Mumbai the, the map got zoomed out. And the same thing happens when we click, at, click on the areas in this Google map. Similarly, port, similarly the portals. Okay, so now let's see the stacked area chart. So this area chart plots in the portal, portal number in various areas, in the various selected areas. And we can also see a tooltip that, sh that shows us the data for a particular time and this area chart, this stacked area chart gives us an option of selecting the areas that we want to plot the chart for. So now let's remove Bombay City, Andheri and Andheri East. So now we can see there are only 5-6 areas plotted and we can add these areas back. So, using this feature, we can dy dynamically add or remove the areas that we want the chart for. So, this is our project and hope you enjoyed it. Thank you. Okay. <coughs> it was a great project. Uh, project. Um, we really like that it um, has a lot of detail and, and really well synchronized between the videos. <coughs> okay. Um, the next runner-up is Visualization of Dinosaur Evolution by Ping Fang, Shabu, and Cha Chen. Hello, welcome to our project, Visualization of Mosozoic Dinosaur Evolution. There are four views in our design. Dinosaur by large means, scatter plot for dinosaurs' height and length. Map for discovered location and description for each node in phylogeny. In the phylogeny, we can select dinosaurs from different orders, suborder, inter-order, and so on, or click on the expand tree to see the full phylogeny. Three filter functions on errors, sites, and some country from current nodes in phylogeny can be applied. Zoom function in cutter plots and map. Um, and the brush function can be used in catapults. The exact button clean all the filters we have picked. Then we could restart our selections. There are some small tricks. Once hover on that one country, two tip shows its name. When the dot is selected, it will be highlighted or updated in corresponding views. Also, having the choice of the arrows and the body types. 
In this project, the interaction between the views is amazing. We can explore the dinosaur from different perspectives. We have some interesting findings after playing around. First, most of the Sauropoda were carnivorous, and other dinosaurs were herbivorous. And we found dinosaurs body size and species number increased along the era. The last finding, dinosaurs fossils were located in spatial geographic areas, such as Rocky Mountain area in the United States and Canada. Thank you for your listening. Okay, for this one we really liked the, the depth of the data and the, did you get a lot of descriptions about the dinosaur and about each clade. So, I think we have one more runner-up. So the next runner-up is Yelp Help uh, by Varyavan <laughs> and Venkata. Greencast for the data visualization final project. And the name of our project is Yelp Helper, where we are trying to analyze uh, the business performance of over 61,000 businesses as part of the Yelp Academy Data Set Challenge. So, uh, here in the visualization, we have four primary graphs one is the map, the sunburst graph here on the right, and then the bar graphs and the area charts at the bottom. So, as you can see, that the reason why we get Google Maps is because we found this more informative compared to the D3 map API, the default one. So let's get started with the visualization. So here you can see the <coughs> map there. You get the hierarchies are clearly depicted with the categories for every different area and their primary uh, uh, node. So if I want to check out the nightlife in Arizona State, so for example, I go to the nightlife and then click, and then you can see that the data being loaded uh, over the map, and uh, also once the data loads, you can see the different floor markers for all the kind of businesses in the nightlife which have bars and uh, uh, dance clubs. So here at the bottom you can also see the bar graph being populated with the top 750 businesses here in order to accommodate the width of the chart. So once you press on the bar graph you can see a new representation of all the individual businesses of fresh uh, and the uh, above focus area. And also there's a nice tool tip to see the number of uh, subcategories of ratings. So you can see there are 63 three star ratings for this particular business. And as you can see, the map is also interactive with the brush. So, for example, right now we are changing the selection of the brush from here to over here. So, you get a new set of businesses that are selected, and in the map you can see that there are a few businesses that are plotted in this area. Now, if the user wants to select that particular business, I just have to click on that. And as you can see, the outlet you can show it a nice tooltip pop up uh, which shows the name of the place and also the number of stars and the pop lips. Uh, interacts with the bar graph right down here, and uh, the area graph gets populated with the ratings over a certain period of time. And if one the user wants to compare multiple businesses, you just have to keep selecting multiple businesses. And as and when you select more, you're basically gonna get uh, multiple reviews and ratings over a period of time. So if I'm clicking right now, three different businesses right here, uh, you can see that they are being populated in the bar graphs right down here. Along with the area graphs here, you can see the uh, primary uh, ratings over a period of time for these businesses. And the data gets uh, converted at one time, so you can see the different visualizations in stream and also in person data is expanded. Also, we have uh, one final visualization for the analysis part wherein the data is on a, on a whole can be visualized as a percentage of uh, uh, the category per area and the number of categories that are present in area and their percentages here as a bipartite graph representation. So as the user can over on a particular uh, category of the business, you can see the number of percentage of that particular category present in every different area that uh, the data set has. And we find this to be a very important tool for the user to analyze the kind of businesses and their, uh, their importance in different areas and vice versa. Thank you. Okay. We liked this one because it was really very comprehensive and had a lot of interesting um, data integrated. So, let's see, whether there's one more runner-up or... No. No? Number three. <laughs> <laughs> Comparison of University Costs by Sierra, Christopher, and Christopher. Our 
visualization allows students to analyze the cost of universities they are interested in. They may start by filtering the schools to their test scores and preferences. If I have a lower test score, I can lower the filter value to only be around my test score value. I'm also going to remove any scores that list no SAT score data. These schools are then displayed in the map. I may click on the map to view their individual locations. They are also listed below. If I double click on university, its detailed information is listed here on the right, and its location is listed here on the map. The graph below lists data for the entire group. Because of the size of the selection, only the first 150 schools are selected. I can change what data is being compared with this drop down. I can also filter the data by clicking one of these buttons. I can also select and reorganize data and move it to the top to make sure that it is included in the graph below. Okay, are you guys here? Okay, well, you can go out. <laughs> you get a lot of chocolate. <laughs> okay, now for the next one. <laughs> Place two goes to Sex, Drugs and Munchies by Ryan Saunders and Bob Wong. Our data visualization is titled Sex, Drugs and Munchies. A look at the correlation of health related habits. The data that we will be presenting comes from the CDC National Health and Nutrition Examination Survey conducted in years 2009-2010. The first step was a lot of data wrangling to reduce the thousands of data elements to 40 that we want to present in an exploratory fashion with our data visualization. Two things that I want to highlight are the abilities to do quick filtering and querying among the 40 variables, as well as to generate multiple views for data comparison. In graph one, I've selected had sex with a new partner in the year as my output. I will place filtering and select only people that were partnered or married as their marital status, as well as the people that drank three or more alcoholic beverages per day for the, the last 12 months. To illustrate the multiple views, what we can do quickly is copy the graph and to place different filtering criteria such that only selecting those that were never married but still drank three or more alcoholic beverages per day for the last 12 months. We employ the usage of color blending to highlight the variables that have active filtering placed on. Okay, congratulations, are you guys here? Yes? Congrats. Thank you. Look at the correlation I also wanted to say that we picked this project as our second best project because we thought this was an example of something really not in the standard D3 toolbox. That there was a lot of custom development and, and very cool interaction and details on demand and so on. Um, so we really liked the project. So the last one, the winner. <laughs> Please indulge me. <laughs> <laughs> the winner is. Come on. Sigraf Pavis by oh. Kui and Duang. Congratulations.
we are interested in visualizing all the CCRF publications from 2002 to 2015. This is the main view of our project. This shows you all the papers. You can click on any of the papers to see the paper that this paper cited in blue and the paper that cited these papers in green. You can zoom in the list to see the papers in detail. You can search the list by title or search by author's name. You can also sort the list by title or sort them by number of citations. You can choose to view the number of citations for all the papers. Once a paper is selected, you can see the abstract of the paper displayed in full together with a list of keywords that are, after are associated with the paper. Uh, we also have a link to an external web website where you can go and download the paper. Here you can see the list of papers that this paper cited and the papers that cited this paper. You can click on any of them to quickly look at their abstract. Here you can see the list of authors of the current selected paper together with their other publications, which you can click on and that will change the current, currently selected paper. Here you see a list of keywords that we extracted from all the papers in our database. You can search the keyword and you can click on any of them to filter the list of papers. Here we only show all the papers which has the keyword that we selected in their abstract and title. You can select multiple keywords in which case, the list of papers will be filtered by only the papers <coughs> which has uh, both the keywords that we select. Okay, congratulations again. Are you guys here? <laughs> Very nice project. Great work. Thank you. Yeah, we really liked this one because it was very, very smooth, everything worked excellently. The data was very rich, you had a lot of filter operations, you had a lot of unconventional, non-off-the-shelf visualization. So we think this is a deserving first place. Okay, that concludes the class, with the exception of one little final thing, which is the exam on Thursday. Uh, a <laughs> little. <laughs> but I had a great time, uh, I hope you did too. Um, um, all the best for the exam, happy holidays. Um, if you're interested, there will be, um, we're talking about having an advanced visualization class, um, probably spring of 2017, if you're still around. Um, so there will be more visualization classes if you found it interesting. Yes? Is that available to the undergraduate or just the master's degree? Uh, we don't even have, we haven't even created the class yet, so <laughs> <laughs> we don't quite know yet. But there will be an advanced visualization class. There might even be an advanced scientific visualization class and an advanced information visualization class. So if you want to learn more, uh, that's an option. Um, if you like this class, did well, and want to be a TA uh, next year, talk to me. And if you want to do any projects uh, over the next spring, uh, also come and talk to me. Thank you very much and all the best for the exam.